Well, hello everybody. It's Brother Todd with your Victory Minute. I hope y'all have had a good day so far. Uh, I wanted to share with you a little bit out of some stuff I was studying on today out of Luke 4 and, uh, and Isaiah 61. And the reason those two chapters are connected is because they're in, in Luke 4. Jesus, it says Jesus went to his hometown there in Nazareth to a little synagogue. It's a very small place, uh, what we call just like a little church. And there in absolute obscurity, he picked up the scroll of Isaiah, read what how it's broke up for us now, Isaiah 61, verse, uh, I'm going to have to hit a little button there, Isaiah 61, uh, verse 1, and halfway through verse 2. And that passage, those three verses there, are all about the Messiah, the anointed one that would come into the world. He would... He would, that's where it talks about he would give them, ultimately give them beauty for, for ashes, that he would give them the, the oil of joy for mourning, those kinds of realities that the Messiah will bring one day uh, and uh, to, to his people. He talks about preaching the gospel to the poor. He talks about healing up the brokenhearted. He talks about uh, setting at liberty those that are, those that are bound. Uh, and, 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 he, and he said, and to, and to and to preach, to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he stopped talking and he sat down and he said, today this verse is fulfilled in your ears. Now, the reason I believe he stopped talking there was because the rest of that verse, it wasn't fulfilled right then. He didn't come at that time to bring the vengeance of the Lord. I've been, uh, I guess that was in my mind because I'm, uh, you know, you get aggravated uh, when you see so much of the world, especially during times like this, they spend more time ridiculing the Lord than, than looking to him or denying him. And, uh, you know, you know, I love the Lord. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to see him. Uh, I don't like seeing people just throw him under the bus, but, uh, so to speak. And, uh, but I was sitting thinking, I was, I was like, you know, Lord, you didn't, you didn't send me to go out and fight against the dark. Uh, you know, like an idiot swinging his fist in, in a dark night. You know, the Lord sent us to, to, to light a light. And that's how you beat darkness. You beat, you beat darkness with light. You don't beat darkness with darkness. And anyway, I was thinking about how the Lord came into this world that's denied his whole creation and redemption. And, and yet he came and he said, I've come to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to preach uh, to the, uh, the good news to those that don't have anything, the poor. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bind up those that are brokenhearted. I'm going to set at liberty, you know, those that, are, those that are bound, those that are bruised. Sometimes it's, it's translated. And, and I, was, uh, uh, I, was, I was looking there at what he, what he said he was going to do. Now, a lot of those promises are like in verse 3. Those are things that are going to come. Those are things we're all going to enjoy one day in our eternity. Uh, and there's things there that we can be doing. Uh, uh, because he said, I, I came to do things. I came to declare. The Lord came to declare. He, he, he doesn't come and grab people by the nap of the neck, so to speak, and shake them and say, this is what is true and make us do something because he doesn't have to grab us to make us do anything. He's God, but he gives us choice. And so he gives his word. He declares word, people accept it or they reject it. You know, I've, I've, I've come to grips with that more and more the older I've got in preaching is that uh, if people are going to believe it or not. Uh, uh, some of y'all knew me when I was young, uh, man, I, you talk about preaching hard and, uh, and I, it was just like, I had to almost make people believe or convince them, you know, just by, uh, by sheer force of will. And you know, the truth is, uh, truth is truth. Uh, I, sometime I declare it like I am now where I'm just talking. Sometime I, you know, I may get more animated about it, but, but the reality is, uh, we, we accept or we don't based on the message. And it's our job, to like, like when Christ came into this world, he's, he's left us what he was doing, and that's to declare. And, and, and I know it's t hard now because our normal way of declaring is we invite somebody to come to church, and then, you know, I've always told people, if, if you'll do what I can't do, which is reach into your circle, I'll do what you might have more difficulty doing or, or might have trouble doing or, or just learning and doing, and I'll declare the gospel to them. And so, we, you know, we, we kind of do it that way, but now it's it's a lot of personal work. Now it's to get them to watch these videos. Now it's now it's get them to watch the sermon. Now it's, now it's uh, you know, share with them across the fence, so to speak. And... Uh, and, and, and we have to increase what we're doing because that's the message of hope. That's what's going to bring people out of, out of this darkness. I mean, you know, liquor sales are through the roof. People are sitting at home. They're just drinking. People are sitting at home. They don't, they don't, have, they don't have hope. And uh, the Lord's called us into this world to, to let people have and experience hope. 
but but I want to finish really in fact what I started you know y'all know how I ramble around uh, with is um, is there was a couple things there that Jesus said he was gonna do right then so he said I'm gonna preach I'm gonna declare that leaves choice but he said I'm gonna I'm gonna set the captive free and uh, and he said I'm gonna bind up the brokenhearted I'm gonna Todd kind of brain kind of stopped there for a second I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bind them up I'm gonna heal the brokenhearted. That's something that the Lord does with us right now in our situation. He 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 heals us, and He gives us freedom even long before we get to heaven, uh, long before we you know we we deal with eternity. Uh, it, it's not it's it's not something we have to do. It's not something one day we will get. It's something we we can possess right now uh, for the broken heart to be healed, and for and for captivity. The captivity primarily of sin he's talking about there but it can be a, a you know it branches out you know sin branches out into like addiction and hurtful ways of thinking about yourself and those kinds of things he he says i want to I, I, I can set you free from that right now and i just want to i want to pause here and and i want to say that if if those of you who are believers uh there's a world out there that's hurting that's bound uh, bound in darkness, bound in, 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 in poor and false thinking, believing lies like they're true, calling the wrong thing right and the right thing wrong. And, and they're bound. And the only thing that's going to set them free is the reality of the gospel of Christ living in them. And that's one of the reasons we're here. You know, like I said, when this whole thing started, at the end of this, we're either going to have done well or we're going to have to repent over what we've done and try to go forward from there. But what we want to do is use this time. This thing is dragging on. Now the novelty's wore off. Now it's, you know, it may have been, it's almost neat to be off there for a couple of weeks and mess around with the kids. But now this, this thing won't end. Why is God lingering it? Why is he allowing it? Why is much of this stuff going on with the economy? One of the things that happens is, is that it gives people the a perspective. And they start looking and they start realizing this world is not very secure. But that freedom that comes in Christ is very secure. And now's the time to be declaring it. Now's the time to be connected with, 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 with people as best you can. And, and to realize that he, that he not only sets us at liberty, but he heals us. And uh, I mean, many's a testimony in the church of how we came broken and the Lord heals us up and binds us up. And if you're listening to this and maybe you don't know Christ right now as your savior, that, that's what he can give you. If you will really put your trust in him. Uh, you know, the Bible says, if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you will be and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's the reality of what we just celebrated at Easter. If you, if you will recognize he's Lord, just like he said he was there in Isaiah 61, he's, or Luke 4, he said, this day this scripture is fulfilled in your ear. I'm, I'm, I am who this word says I am. And if you'll put your, believe that in Christ, believe that he died for you on the cross, rose from the grave, you can have life. You're talking to a living God. Uh, the reality is he gives peace. I, I came to the Lord when I was I was an 11-year-old boy. I was lost. I knew I was lost. I took one step towards him. My spirit's never been the same since. I've faced death a few times. I've always had peace. Uh, I've seen lots of death. I've seen lots of pain. I've seen, I've seen unbelievers dying in hospitals and on the side of the road, and I've seen saved folks die. And I'm telling you, there's a difference. And I just uh, I pray and hope and know that you have that liberty that comes in Christ and you have that healing. And for those of us that are that are believers, and as I'm this little victory minute, I know most of y'all watching me on the internet are, are, are members or regular attenders of victory, you call victory home. It's, uh, it's, it's time that we make sure that our light is shining in a very dark time. Well, I love you. I pray that you'll take Luke 4, read through it some today, Isaiah 61. And notice there in verse two, is Isaiah 61, where the Lord stopped short when it was talking about the day of vengeance because it wasn't time for it yet. And, uh, and how he said up to this point, this, is, this has been done. And then look at all those promises that are coming. Well, I love you and I hope that you have a great day. God bless you. Bye-bye.